this uh, presentation is specifically about growing in the dome. And uh, I guess I've been probably growing in growing domes longer than anybody here because I had one 20 years ago. So um, I guess I learned a few things. And so these are some of the topics I want to talk about, which is not about like basic gardening. You know, Chrissy talks about that. We're going to have other people talking about that. But this is specifically things I've learned about the dome, how it's different to a regular garden and what goes on in there. What's the best way to... To, to use it, you know, climate control, all these things. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to address a topic, and then I'm going to ask for any questions, and we'll go on to the next topic. So planting <coughs> with the seasons. So um, I always used to tell people there are two seasons in the growing dome. There's the hot season and the cold season. And in the hot season, you grow all your heat-loving plants, you know, peppers, squash, tomatoes beans, uh, melons, eggplants, etc., etc. And in the cold season, you grow the cool weather crops, you know, the members of the cabbage family, onions, leeks, kale, collards, spinach, Swiss chards, <coughs> etc. In the spring and fall, there's a change over time. I actually uh, discovered there are three seasons in the dome. Mm -hmm. And just tonight, I figured out there are actually four seasons in the dome. What I discovered about the third season is that the change over time between your hot weather plants and your cold weather plants is actually a two months change over time because if you have any knowledge about gr dome growing at all and how plants work, you'll sow the seeds for your winter crops in September in the growing dome. And the reason for this is in September, all your tomatoes are producing, the peppers, and everything's gone crazy. So you don't even bother thinking about the winter. It's like, it's ecstasy, it's lush, it's a jungle in there. But be warned, you have to sow the seeds in September because if you suddenly go in November, there's a frost. Oh my goodness, my tomatoes, they froze or whatever, you know, late, late November, that can happen. Uh, and then you've got nothing, you know, for your winter crops. So you sow the seeds in November, but unfortunately by then the soil, average soil temperature is getting fairly cool and the seeds don't germinate properly. And then by the time December comes and the sun's low in the sky and the nights are really cold, the days are short, those little plants are kind of trying to make it through. And uh, they don't really fully get engaged until the daylight starts to lengthen in February. So you've got a couple of months, you know, when you're not, you don't have any green. But if you've been a wise person and followed my advice, you have all these plants that you sow the seeds for in September, and you sow those either in flats and put them on the crossbar of the water tank, or you find a little space down below your giant tomato plants and uh, sow these uh, plants in the flat, uh, flats and then transport them either, transplant them either to little pots sort of scattered around here and there, and then uh, within about a month, maybe the middle of October, then you put them in the soil. Now, the middle of October, all your heat-loving crops, the, the tomatoes and peppers, they're up here, you know, the foliage is like spread about here, and, and all, all there is on the ground, you just uh, take away the lower foliage and there's bare dirt because you've got one tomato here, another tomato there, another one there. And so you've got all this space down below where you can put your winter crops. It's called intercropping and it's called cropping at different levels. And generally speaking, you know, by the time late November comes, you get that really, really like zero or sub-zero frost. It's bye-bye tomatoes. Uh, occasionally, tomatoes will kind of struggle on until, um, you know, um, my experience, I don't have a heater in my dome, so I mean, if, if you have a heater, then, you know, you could probably make them go longer, but, you know, the, the fruit is hard, it doesn't set well, it, it doesn't taste as nice as these rapid growing tomatoes in July, August, September, October, things slow down. What I say generally is, okay, uh, November, most of your heat loving things, they're going to quit, so you know, say bye bye and, and pull them out. And there's all your winter crops 
fully established. And what I do uh, is I go, go around, and, and uh, if you've got plant, so in November it's about this big. If you sow the, the seeds in September, it's about this big. And I go and pull off a leaf from each of the plants, and there's a salad every day. And so uh, they're putting on a little bit of fresh growth every time the sun shines. So that crop is going to see you all through the winter. And Richard and Janet, they do a broadcast of uh, seeds, like sowing a lawn of uh, Jenny Watson, like masculine mix, a mixture of like lettuce and uh, kale and sort of little salad greens. You know those miniature salad greens you get in bags. Well, this masculine mix, I think somebody got some seeds. Did you get some masculine mix seeds? Yes. Everybody got some. Everybody got some? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is the best stuff. So, what Richard and Janet do is they go along, every time they want a salad, they just get a pair of scissors and cut off a patch of the masculine about that high from the ground. Just cut off all the leaves, and but they leave the plant in there because it's going to have fresh regrowth and so they just uh, work their way across the bed harvesting for every salad and then by you know about 10 days or two weeks uh, after they started they can go back to the beginning and there's a bunch of fresh leaves about two three weeks yes yeah couple so that's another way i sort of uh, do the leaf per plant methodology and they do the cut and come back methodology. So planting with the season, we're still on this topic. The next season is spring, February, March, April. And what's happening is all these winter crops that you sowed in uh, the seeds in September, now they're fully established and they're, as soon as the daylight starts to lengthen, they just grow like crazy. It's incredible. The, the leaves are succulent and tender and you just want to go on eating them forever. But unfortunately, they have one <coughs> plan in mind that you didn't realize they're going to go to seed. Unfortunately, that's their whole purpose in life. They're an annual, and their whole purpose is to grow some leaves and then go to seed, uh, put out flowers, and then spread their seeds for the next generation. So, unfortunately, guys, uh, round about the middle of March, all your winter crops are going to go to seed. And it's okay, I mean, you can eat the flowers and keep eating and try to prevent them going to seed, but sorry, they're going to get leggy, the leaves are going to get smaller and smaller. They're determined to just uh, reproduce themselves. However, if you've discovered the third season in the dome, this is when you sow another set of winter cool weather crops about the middle of February because then the ground is warm enough to germinate seeds and you get what I call a catch crop between uh, those things are going to be ready to eat about the middle of March. Between March, April, May, you've got another set of uh, cool weather crops, greens mainly, to eat while your uh, summer crops are not producing yet. So that's the third season in the dome is a catch crop of cool weather. Now, you might ask, when does the summer season stop? When do I put in my warm weather crops? And I say, well, uh, if you're a gardener like me, uh, who loves to have a jungle in the, in the dome, what happens uh, is that, um, you know, the, the tomatoes produce and you can't keep up with them, there's so many and some fall to the ground. And lo and behold, in February and March, you see the tomato plants have germinated and you've got new plants. So that's the key that the tomatoes think it's warm enough to start germinating and putting out new plants. So that's the key to me. Well, maybe it's time to plant my uh, heat loving crops. Uh, the soil has warmed up enough to do that. So that's, um, that's one thing to take notice of when you're deciding you know, when to plant the summer crops. And uh, I generally plant them around about the middle of March, middle of March to middle of April. However, the, the fourth season is the season when the plants themselves decide they want to grow. And so you get this extra, completely haphazard, random set of plants that uh, you can harvest throughout the year. So that's plants for the season.